Please see your identification. What did you say? I'll tighten those restraints. Scavenger scum. We don't need to see his identification. I will remove these restraints and leave the cell with the door open. To veterans. Oh, to veterans. By the time this airs, it'll be just about before Veterans Day. Just about before. So. Veterans Day. Yes. Right. So Veterans Day is. (laughs) We'll be close to the observed Veterans Day, right? Because it falls over the weekend. It does. Yeah. And so this will this will actually air before Veterans Day. So this is one of those unique opportunities where we're not backpedaling <laughs> yes. by missing something. Right. And we can actually say, Happy Veterans Day to yes. all the veterans out there. Yes, to everybody. You know, Jason, happy Veterans Day. And to you as well, Dave. Thank you. Yes. That's very self serving. And, and and to the John out there and, and all of our other Yes, all all our veteran listeners, thank you very much. Yeah. Big uh, Lovin'. Big Lovin's a veteran. Oh, very good. Yeah. Um what, what's his What's his name that I pissed off real good? Uh, oh, uh, Bronco Fett. Bronco Fett, yes. Bronco Fett, ha- happy Veterans Day. Is he a veteran? Yeah. It says oh. in his profile, U.S. Army. Oh, shit. I totally missed that. Sorry, yeah. Bronco. So, But Dave's the one who should be apologizing to you, not me. I'm, I'm, I'm giving him a, a happy <laughs> Veterans Day. So that's. <laughs> I see you're wearing your pedo state hat. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> go fuck yourself. College college football is a sore subject right now. Yeah, well. However, go go birds. Go yeah, Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> so at least this, I still have that. This is what I have to listen to li- <laughs> living so close to Philadelphia. All of you obnoxious Eagle fans. But in all seriousness, thanks to uh, everyone out there serving who has served, who continues to serve, and who will serve. Um, it's an honor and pl- pleasure to... Uh, be a part of that, of that group. Absolutely. So, you know, All right. cheers again. Cheers again. So hello, everyone. <clears throat> <clears throat> Don't know what that was. A little beer caught in the throat. And welcome to All Things Star Wars, the greatest Star Wars podcast in the galaxy. Leaving yourself wide open for it on. Yeah, this is episode 28. I'm Mr. Jason Roscom. With me here each and every single week, the Darth Vader to my Emperor Palpatine, Dave Martin. Hello, Dave. Hello, Jason. How are you? I'm actually I'm I'm pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. I'm still com- coming. Still have that high from the Eagles' uh, absolute thrashing of the Denver Broncos mm. yesterday. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, I got I've, I've I've actually I was doing productive podcast things over the past couple days. I noticed that, and yep. I I I feel like <laughs> I feel like I've actually earned my keep a little bit. Was it from John shaming you like over the, one of the last couple episodes? You know what? No, it has nothing to do with that okay. at all. If, if anything, that would have deliberately <laughs> put me off the rails. You're like, you know what? Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> Fuck him. Fuck Jason. I do a shit. <laughs> no, I actually I had a I had some time where I could sit down at the computer and it was quiet. And I didn't have any, anything else to do, and I'm like. I just, you know, there's a couple projects that we've been wanting to kind of get get moving on, mm-hmm. you know, as we get ready for The Last Jedi premiere. Yeah, it's ramping up. Yeah, so, and we're... Yeah, what's the count, by the way? Oh. So it's coming out the 14th. Yeah. Today is November... Uh, by the time you hear this, it'll be November 8th or 9th. Or 9th. Yeah, Let's so... Go, we can go with the 9th, but... So we'll say 30 it or do, it 21 doesn't, days. It doesn't matter. For purposes of this podcast, as it stands today, I'm going to open up my Star Wars app, and I'm going to tell you... That in 38 days, 3 hours, 26 minutes, and 33 seconds, The Last Jedi will be out. And Man. that's probably based on the Friday. So chances are right, we're we'll see it on the Thursday. It. So it'll be 37 Sooner days. 37? <laughs> in a row? Um, yeah. So good, good the, Clark's reference there. Yes, yes. <laughs> so the excitement is building. And as we progress through these next few episodes, it's only going to ramp up. With we got Battlefront Two coming out, oh, we got God. some more books we got to talk oh, about, yes. and yeah, the the excitement is building, and it's a really good time to be a Star Wars fan. Yeah, it's it, so much so that ordinarily, instead of going home from work early today and playing <laughs> Call of Duty because the new Call of Duty came out, <laughs> right? So I'm I'm usually would be one of the first ones, especially because it's World War Two, and World War Two is kind of my thing mm-hmm. for that. I haven't even, I can't, I went home, I played Battlefront, I'm still trying to clear out some fucking Java (laughs) contracts, it's not even, like, all I can think about right now is Star Wars, so the hype of the Call of Duty release and all that, I know people at work were playing it, 
My son actually has it. He he got it on release day and he's been Did playing he? it. Yeah. It, what's it? How's it look? Does it look? Good? I don't know. I don't care. Yeah. Honestly, it's just fucking. It's it's all about stars right now. At some point, maybe down the road, I, I when <laughs> when it's discounted to like you know half price, maybe I pick it up. Yeah. You know, I'm no, I'm just. I'm so excited about Battlefront 2 right now. That's all I want to do is play Battlefront and mm-hmm. immediately start playing Battlefront 2 when it comes out. Yeah. And we're going to talk more about that next week because next week we're having our Inferno Squad wrap up. And I had some other Battlefront 2 stuff I wanted to talk. So we'll talk about that next week. For now, what are we talking about this week? We're talking about a bunch of stuff. Yeah. This this, this is a – well, I think we're encapsulating this as a closing the book on Captain Phasma, yeah. although we're really not going to talk about that till later. Yeah, plus that, that's probably going to take a whopping 10 minutes. Yeah, maybe. At the most. That While the rest of this stuff, we got a lot of shit going on. First of all, we had some breaking news today. <laughs> okay, we, we get it. Um, <laughs> so a news just broke. This was like three hours ago. Reuters broke the news that Disney was recently in talks with 21st Century Fox to buy a large chunk of their company, which is huge. The only thing that they weren't in, in talks to buy was their their cable stations, like, their, right. like the Fox News, Fox Sports, all that shit, because there's like monopoly uh, right. risks with that. Right, because they already have their own – they have they already own ESPN, mm-hmm. and they already own ABC as far as – Network broadcast. Right. And everything associated with those. Right. So, but the, you know, some of the, as far as TV goes, some of the stuff that was on the table was like FX. Right. Uh, and, and some shit like that. But anyway, <laughs> the big thing was like their movie section. Their, right. The movie studios, things that they own distribution rights to. Yeah. Holy shit. This is why this is breaking news for the podcast. Yeah. Because, this is why it's relevant to Star Wars. Yes. We all know, as it has been talked about at length, mm-hmm. you know, if you've listened to this podcast or, the pre the previous uh, project VCR. And I know we talked about it a lot when I was on. We were mm-hmm. talking about potential of of seeing the actual theatrical releases at some point. Yep. But because 21st Century Fox had the rights to it, probably you would never see that. Well, guess what? the The one thing that could change that outcome mm-hmm. is in talks to happen. Yeah. As I air quotes. Yes. Out here. Because, yeah, nothing's official right now. It's only dialogue. Dis- Disney and having. 21st Century Fox were, would not comment. I read the end. Right. I got all the way to the end of the article that you sent me, and I was mm. like, and that they wouldn't comment. So that yeah. probably means it's happening. Now, interestingly enough, as a Disney stockholder, it makes me wonder if I'll, if I'll get something. Oh, get some like happens. Some like Fox stock in addition. To no, it? just something. Just something like, hey, this is something. This is what we're talking oh. about. This is what the our an expansion potential in our company, right? You know, because they're going to have to expend a lot of capital, right? And they to have to explain that. that. They have to explain it to their to stockholders. stockholders, right? So maybe, maybe I'll find out. Ooh. Maybe I'll find out ahead of time. Oh man, break that shit on the show. Yes, that'd be so much fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Nerds. So. Yeah, so, but I mean, yeah, this is big. We talked about the original trilogy distribution rights. As of right now, I think uh, I'll have to go back and verify, but I think right now, 20th Century Fox has distribution rights on the original trilogy up to 2020 or 2021. Okay. After that, they will forever maintain rights to the original movie, Star Wars Episode Four, New Hope. Because of whatever deal they cut with Lucas to get the movie released at the time in 77. Right. So unless they sell that or cut some sort of deal with Disney, they will always own the home video distribution and probably theatrical distribution, too, of A New Hope, the original Star Wars movie. But this could you wonder, alleviate all that. You, yeah, you wonder how that's – they'd have to. They, they have to. they have to know that that's the risk going into it. Sure. Like they can't hold on to this property just for the sake of <laughs> – Star Wars. And honestly, it's probably one of the reasons why Disney's doing this in the first place. I mean, not the sole reason, of course. Yeah. But you think about this, too. Excuse me. Years before Marvel sold itself to Disney, they, um, they, uh, fuck. What is it when I give you the right to do something with my property? Um, fuck. <laughs> I, I, I have a, I have a comic book character. You are a different company, but you want to make up licensing. They licensed out a bunch of their Marvel properties. Glad he came up with that on his own because I had no idea where he was going with that. <laughs> they licensed out a bunch of their Marvel properties to Fox okay. to make movies. Some of those properties include X Men, Deadpool, who kind of falls into the X Men, the right. Fantastic Four. That's why you don't see X Men in these fucking Marvel Cinematic Universe movies because 21st Century Fox has the rights, all rights to fucking X Men characters in Marvel movies. So this is why. Also, that that X Men show that's on 
Is that on a Fox property? Is it like Probably. the new X, X-Men show that's out? I, I would it, imagine. It's part of that universe. I, I don't pay enough attention, but I do know. I only know it from watching the commercials from while I'm watching football. Right. But yeah, I, I do know that they hold the rights to these movies for apparently it's indefinite as long as they're making movies they just get to keep indefinite rights to to make movies out of this but if disney buys out the fox properties they'll be like oh now we get our fucking x-men back we get fantastic four back and now we're gonna create them into our current marvel cinematic universe like what they did with spider-man do you get the you get the feeling that like it's almost it's almost too big like could disney could possibly get too big yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah, where it's it's in control of too much, and now it's fighting itself for its own like distribution and like <sighs> maybe like competing against itself for like how can you get like oh we want to put out a movie with on, with this property and or well, we're doing a movie with this property also and like how how can it control so much and then, oh by the way they're still going to put out some like Cars six yeah. you know that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> some ridiculous. Yeah, thing. yeah, because they've got Pixar, right? They've so got, it's I, no. Right. You, you make a valid point. Like there could become a point where they just get over bloated, and it's like it's too much. But I mean, again, for us as Star Wars fans, this is great. And one thing that people speculated about is that this is again part of their online streaming service that's coming. This right. could be a play having to do with that. Be like, okay, we snag up all these 20th Century Fox properties. Now we throw all these onto our fucking streaming service in addition to all the other shit we own. Right. You know, and now this will be a legitimate competitor to Netflix, which that's what I think this all boils down to. This is them trying to compete with Netflix in that market. Well, either compete with Netflix or drive what it's, I think we already see happening is you're going to have – you're 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 looking at having Hulu, having uh, Google's whatever Google's version of their TV service is going to be. Yeah, you know, YouTube Apple's. Shit. Yeah, it's it's all going to be a la carte. You know, how mm-hmm. my viewing experience is going to be. I'm going to get it and stream it through these particular services, yeah. and then whoever's licensed that, then that's how I'm going to get it. I mean, if this is how we have to get to a la carte. I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, I mean we're almost there. We're we're almost there. It yeah, seems like because honestly, traditional cable as somebody who like I basically the only reason I have any cable television at all, it besides having to have the internet because mm-hmm. I feel like in my area, and I'm not going to get into right. an argument between you know the <laughs> like, the, the, the monopolized and- Ver- Verizon alleged FiOS mm-hmm. and you know Comcast you know broadband that's that ha- have in my area. Mm-hmm. It really comes down to. For a price. It's a price point. Like yeah. I negotiated a price point with Comcast that it, it suits me. And I, oh, by the way, in, in a process of negotiation, actually, I got to get a lot of ca- credit to Kathy for that because she initiated a lot of it. Mm. Um, we got, you know, basically the family package too. So, like, when my niece and nephews are come over, they can watch Nickelodeon. Right. But that's it. That we get like basic channels and then like a Nickelodeon channel, and that's it. But I'm, I'm paying less than $100 a month. And getting yeah. the fastest cable that that Comcast that puts out, and that's good, that, and so that's great for me. Yeah, but from otherwise, I would have no cable channels at all. I go off an antenna service, which I could watch my football games because I'm a local Philadelphia area. Like we we live in spitting dis- distance of the city. Yeah, if it wasn't for all these trees, we could probably see the skyline from yeah. right here. Yeah, exactly. So I think this is Disney. I like I said. Long, st- I extended that out way further than <laughs> need to be, but I don't know that Disney's necessarily trying to overtake Netflix. I think this is Disney putting its mark on. Hey, when you log into your Roku or your Apple TV, or if you're getting it through your television itself, like mm-hmm. Samsung and uh, Sony televisions have their own apps structure. Sure, like this is just another opportunity to have. Okay, this is going to be your Disney streaming app, you know, and this is going to be how you're going to stream this content. Yeah. So I, I, I. Th- I, my only fear is that you know Disney gets to a point where now it, it's 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 almost too big for itself. Yeah, and it's it's been it's been this snowball rolling down a hill, and it's been getting bigger and bigger and faster and it's faster amazing. very quickly. Over yeah, the I last wish decade. I was I wish I owned more Disney stock. Honestly, yeah. I wish I could go back fucking thirty years and buy a shitload of yeah, it. Yeah, right. Um, anyway, so yeah, keep an ear open for that. Like we said, nothing is official yet. This this was only just a insider report from some fucking 
you know, Reuters news company or whatever, which, as we said, with when the Obi-Wan Kenobi movie news broke, calm the fuck down. We yeah. don't we don't have any confirmation about anything. But Although we're not being calm, obviously. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> so, yes, I, I see the irony here. Anyway, we had some other shit come out this week that I think is worth bringing up. And I forgot to tell you this before we started recording, but I think you should do it now. Can you pull up that TV commercial on your iPad, much like we did the trailer um, when we covered the trailer a while back? Yes, let me get into well, YouTube. <laughs> all right, while you're doing that. So, yeah, we had a new TV spot released during the World Series, I believe it was. It was like game five or six of the World Series. They just threw this new fucking Last Jedi TV spot out at us. And a majority of it is just some rehashed scenes from the last trailer that we saw during Monday Night Football a few weeks ago. Uh-huh. But it had a few new significant additions, which I want to go over. And I figure if we can make it work, I'd like to do it the exact same way we did it last time with the trailer, where You're we start talking, playing so, it. So this is the 45-second spot. Yep. Here. Okay, so we can do that. Yeah, so... Problem? No way that's gonna. It's not gonna show up on the camera. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, YouTube audience, and we'll get to that in a minute. So, yeah. how? Oh, oh, oh. Jesus Christ, Damn Dave! Mind. Well, listen, listen, listen. Don't don't yell at me. <laughs> but for one, it's I silenced this fucking thing finally because I'm constantly getting yelled at for this iPad making noise. So I finally fucking <laughs> silence it. And now and we the, need sound. And the one time we need sound, I'm getting yelled at. <laughs> so fuck you. <laughs> All, right. All right. So this is 45 seconds. We're going to break this down. Uh, again, a lot of this is stuff we already saw, so we're going to breeze past that. We're mostly going to focus on the new content. So without further ado. Okay, go ahead and pause it right there. Well, yeah, well, right in the beginning, we're seeing something that we haven't seen before. Right, which it's, it's obviously it's catching our eye right from the start. It's Luke in black right now. Right. Keep in mind, we've got two different Lukes in this fucking movie, apparently. <sighs> Luke in the, the white and gray, and then Luke in black. This is Luke in black walking onto the bridge of the Millennium Falcon. Why well, can't why the, this back in black song came right into my head? <laughs> Luke in black. Because I'm Luke in black. That was good. Uh, thanks. <laughs> so, yeah, we got this iconic shot of Luke walking into the Millennium Falcon onto the bridge and just kind of looking around like... Turning the power on, you yeah. know, just like... Now, my initial impression when I first saw this was, this motherfucker's going to steal this. <laughs> he's, gonna, he, this he's, he's rolling in there, yeah. and he's going to steal the fucking Millennium Falcon. That's that's what my initial impression yeah, was. Yeah, he's like, this fucking, this crazy force bitch just showed up out of nowhere. Yep. She's like breaking rocks on the fucking island. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to bounce. Yeah, so. so I'm a force choker to death. I don't want to fucking get out. <laughs> all right. Or, all right. So we're going to play. I've seen that. Yeah. So, so the whole let the past die line. All right. Pause. Okay. Lots going on there. So if you want to just back up a little bit. So we get. A scene with, uh, we see Kylo Ren smash his helmet in another temper tantrum as he tends to have. And then we see, or we hear Snoke's voice in a little bit different of a delivery because normally he has a deep rumbling voice. Yeah, he's very raspy. It's and, that intimidation. And yeah, it's the intimidation voice or you get the, the, the sound of his voice is more. Rises. But this, the, the way the, his voice inflection is different when he yeah. says, like, darkness rises and light to meet it, which, of course, they're, they're playing on the whole balance thing. And we right. see a, a far off shot, if you can just back up like a couple seconds, of uh, what appears to be his throne room. Nope. Oh, God, you are fucking terrible. Wow. That, look at oh, how Jesus look. Christ. I'm just going to play it. It's just going to go from here. Fuck it. Just fuck it. Do it live. Oh, right there. Okay, so yeah, so we see a fucking throne room shot. We got Snoke there in the middle on some kind of throne. We got Hux, fucking redheaded Hitler, kind of off to the right, completely surrounded by this new royal guard, the red, whatever the fuck they're called. Uh, they have a name in this. I don't remember what don't, it is. I don't either. Yeah. So lots of shit going on in Imperial this little chandeliers. Right. And it looks like somebody's walking towards him, either Kylo Ren or Ray, because Hux is kind of looking over his left shoulder. Everybody's like looking at from our point of view. Like this looking it, at this us. is on a, I, I, I want to believe this is on a, a spacecraft. Probably. Because, yeah, I don't think the First Order has a home base, especially after Starkiller base was annihilated. 
So, all right, continue. Okay. Keep going, keep going. All right, this right there, that scene. This that that was an extension of the ray, like swinging the lightsaber around from the trailer and then right. stomping on the rock. But this, the way they were depicting her, she's like fucking pissed. She's swinging the lightsaber around in anger in this thing, and that's going to kind of lead to some theories I have by the end. But if you notice, like she's not just like gracefully swinging it around; she's like fucking angry. Okay. Okay, all of this we've seen. We've seen that, but then the new look of Finn's face. Fuck you, Porgs. <laughs> that, oh, Open God. cockpit, Finn doesn't... Yeah, pause it real quick. Oh, 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 okay, so... All right, so we get a lot of s- scenes from the battle on Crate, and now we know Finn is in one of those fucking weird speeder pod thingadoos right. that's attacking the Imperial Walkers. Or the First Order Walkers, whatever the fuck yeah, they're there called. there he is. Doing his typical shtick, the whole, woo! You know, why like is, he was... Why is it open cockpit? That doesn't make any sense. It seems like it would, he's not wearing a helmet. For circulation, so they can... I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> buy it. Yeah, it's it's dumb. But, uh, yeah, he's he's doing his normal hooting and hollering like he did in uh, all Force right, Awakens. All right, all right, all right. Let's not, I, let's not dwell on the, the Finn hate train here. <laughs> Good. Oh. Uh, another shot of Leia, but the shot right after this of the Millennium Falcon like busting out a fucking crate. Boom! Yeah. That's a pretty awesome shot. Never seen that before. Yeah. Okay, so. We, so we saw that we saw that already. So we now, saw the Luke part. Of right. That. This is not gonna end the way you think. Or Luke like laying down in the fucking rain. Right. And is all black. But at the end of that, we see Ray. Also standing in the rain, right. looking down at somebody and raising the fucking lightsaber yeah, like she's this, about to strike. And this is hair down Ray as well. Yes, like this is which is significant because I don't think we see that version of Ray until much later in the movie, or <sighs> what we've seen in the trailers. <sighs> right, you know, from what we could tell, it's tough to it's tough to put. Time, right. We've talked about this before. It's tough to put time stamps on where we think these things are going to happen right. in the movie because they may either never show it at all mm-hmm. or are completely – everything happens in the beginning. We have no idea what happens after. Right. And obviously Lucasfilm knows what they're doing right. when they release these commercials and trailers. They know we're going to sit here and overanalyze it and right. go but through I, it scene by scene. But, but I do agree with you that the this particular scene seems to meld – together better than what they allude to in the trailer right. where you see a you know you see Ray dive into the water mm. and then it looks like she's climbing out of the water seeing Luke in black right you know it's, there's a, those are two, two, two different scenes yes. she's dry she's dry scene. with the hair down right. too with this look in that outfit right so and Luke was in the black so this is obviously at some point later than that yeah so and yeah she raises the lightsaber like she's about to fucking strike Luke so, I mean, obviously, this has people speculating. Just fuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right, we're done. We're done with that. Man. You've used an iPad before, right? Are, are you familiar with Apple products? You, you try doing this shit with my Lego hands. <laughs> try doing anything with my Lego hands. So, yeah. So, miracle I can fucking function at all. And before we get into these theories, we're going to also hop right into some new posters that have been either leaked or released in other countries and not here in the U.S. So... We uh, listener David Schmuck, guy who's been with us for since episode one. Thank you, David, for posting this stuff onto our Facebook page. He posted two posters today that have been released internationally. One of them is first this one that I wanted to bring your attention to. Yeah, uh, for the video audience, sorry, it's, you're not going to see it, but yeah. this poster, which is a Japanese poster, which is you know kind of cool, kind of similar to a lot of the other posters, a lot of red and black. You see. Kylo Ren and Luke Skywalker with lightsabers. And we'll put links to these in the show description, too, if you've never seen these. So Kylo Ren and Luke Skywalker each holding a lightsaber. Kylo Ren's got his. And Luke's holding a blue lightsaber. Right. Not a green lightsaber. And that might be the baby killer. And then behind them, the person that's the main focus at the back of the poster is Rey. And she looks very dark in this. 
She looks very dark side. Well, she's she's wearing like she's got a high collar red tunic on. Yeah. Like I'm looking at it at a smaller version of it. Yeah. Her hair's kind of pulled back. Yeah, she's got and, traditional ray hair thing going. Yeah. High collar tunic in red. Obviously there's a lot of red overtones to this whole fucking movie, mm-hmm. which yeah, it's uh, all their promotion material. Yeah. As we as we look at the on the wall over yep. here at the Everyone in their red post, red outfits there. Yep. But so yeah, but this, th- I mean, a fucking porg in this poster. There's a porg in fucking everything. God damn. Yeah. God damn porgs. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, a couple odd things. I think the the more telling thing in this is Luke holding the baby killer, as opposed to his green lightsaber That's or Ray having the baby killer. That's so it does. I tend to agree with you. It yeah. does. It does look like the baby killer. And again, especially because see the yep the little the notch there at the out. top yep. So could it mean something? Could hear it. <laughs> or again, could this all just be one big fucking troll by of Lucasfilm? Of course it is. But if it is, then this next one is Troll Supreme. And now I'm sure, like me, the first time you and a lot of people saw this dual poster was a tweet from fucking Mark Hamill himself yeah. on Twitter because somebody had tweeted this to him and he retweeted it and it sent everybody into a fucking frenzy. This is a double poster set that they've released. I think, again, it's only been released internationally and there's like a uh, there's a picture floating online of a an IMAX kiosk with these two posters and like kind of making an archway and these two posters right. on either side. Right. So... Yeah, we've got a light side and a dark side. We've got Ray at the center of one, Kylo Ren at the center of the other. They're both holding their lightsabers in like they're like opposite stances of each other where their lightsabers. If you put the poster side by side, the posters kind of come together. Then you've got Finn facing Phasma on on one side or or on one section of the uh, the poster. You've got Leia and Hux kind of like in the same spots, uh, like mirror yeah, images you can of each barely other. Barely see Hux yeah. at all. Leia is fairly prominent. But of course, the most interesting part of this is Luke, who is uh, in both the light side and the dark side poster. He is Luke with the hood down in the fucking gray and white outfit on the light side poster. And he's Luke in the fucking black outfit with the fucking dark hood pulled over his head in the dark side poster. So again, are we being fucking trolled by Lucasfilm and Mark Hamill and everybody? Or I mean, is this are they telling us something? What does all this mean? The Ray lifting the lightsaber going down to strike Luke at the end of that commercial. What does it all mean? I think it means that we're hyper analyzing <laughs> for one. Yeah. Which is what we're what we're here to do. Yeah. I for one this is this is what I think. Yes. Balance. Okay. It's about the it's about balance. They're showing Luke who if you if you run off Okay, the fucking galaxy is in complete chaos, mm-hmm. right? He 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 knows the shit's going down. Some kid just tore apart his Jedi Academy. And it's like, oh fuck, you know what 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 do you do? Do you go and you you help your sister, you know, with the with the resistance, and you know, make sure it's strong enough to repel this this evil that's going to be coming? A, a, or where do you run the fuck away? Yeah, run run away like a bitch. Yeah, right, run away like a bitch. And, you know, this this is. Taking this for just what it is, no, no novels, no, none of the books that are, you know, we've already been read, and no, mm-hmm. none, nothing else. All I would say is, there's going to be a part of him who never really understood where he was supposed to be in the Force, right? And when you spend ostensibly, you know, a decade or more on an island by yourself, trying to figure this shit out, yeah. or doing whatever. You know, hopping, trying to find things in the force and really trying to figure out what am I supposed to fucking be doing here? Mm-hmm. Like, am I supposed to after the this, this fucking, you know, kid rip here decides he's going to annihilate my Jedi Academy? Yeah. And I'm like, well, fuck, I thought my whole purpose in uh, in the force was to rebuild the Jedi Order. Yeah. Now that's annihilated. Now what the fuck am I supposed to be? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you're. 
not to mention the fact that he's had he's always had a tendency to play to his anger. Yeah. You know, his decisions that he's made throughout the entire trilogy have 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 always come from a place of anger. Mm-hmm. What makes him decide to go with Obi-Wan? You know, it's not it's 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 anger at the at the empire, at the, yeah. the empire for killing his fucking family yeah. and destroying his home. You know, that's what takes him off world. That's what gets him involved in this whole fucking thing. Mm-hmm. He's angry at Obi-Wan, yeah. you know, for at some point giving him in his fucking certain point of view fucking bullshit speech <laughs> yeah. for for the Jedi masters that lied to him mm-hmm. for all that time. So I'm sure if I'm going to sit there and I'm going to fucking stew over this shit for a decade or so, sure. It is not it is not it is not a reach for me to believe that at some point he's going to be like my fucking my business here is not with your fuck with not with the light side or the dark side. It's with whatever whatever wherever the force is taking me. Right now the force is taking me in this direction. Yeah. I think the darkness of the robes it's you can't really get anything from that because the guy was in all black when he went to fucking Jabba's right. Palace. We've right. We mentioned that before. So the coloring may may the coloring is just there. It's showing everyone's dark, everyone's like lighter and red or whatever mm. in those other posters. But he, if the Darth Vader or Anakin Skywalker was the chosen one, I think he was the chosen one to bring balance to the Force, right? right. Well, if we're still going to go with that. Yeah. So the balance is ultimately Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Right? It's Luke and Leia. They are the balance. Well, we can spend a whole episode talking about the theory of the balance, but because but, but, I, I have a different theory on that. But that's if, if you're going to ask me to try and de- decipher, well, why in the poster put him on both sides? Yeah, I think that's ultimately the answer comes down to balance. Well, I think they're fucking with this. And I'll give you my quick theory before we move on. My theory is that we're going to see a double turn. I think we're going to see Kylo Ren start leaning towards the light again. And I think we're going to see Ray go dark. I think. Yeah, because we're going to have to. There's going to be a point where we're going to be talking about if that happens, which I, I tend to, I tend to agree with you. Mm-hmm. If that happens, why? What if? I think. Are we? We're doing a Force Awakens retrospective before the movie, right? Isn't that a part yeah. of our thing? Yeah. So we're going to talk about more about this then. I think. Yeah. But when Kylo Ren says, "I feel it," that that draw to the light. Mm-hmm. Where is that coming from? Is that just that's, the force in general, or, or is that is there something that's like literally calling to him in the force to be on the light side? Like what? What? Where theory. does that? Con- what does that conflict come from? Is that something from Luke? Because if Snoke is obviously trying to steer him in one direction, who's trying to pull him in the other direction? It's a good point. Is it Anakin Skywalker himself, as he worships the husk that uh, you know the, the, the helmet? Mask, yeah. That's that's all a good theory. We, we know that we know that they're force ghosts and everything else. So this again is yeah, probably well, more in a retrospective. <laughs> yeah, let's table that discussion for a later time. But uh, yeah, bring back uh, up to the screen. Make sure that we're still recording. I uh, know this is yeah. All right, yeah, good. looks good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't want to hear the technical difficulties music today. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that last week. So all right, moving on because we got a lot of shit to get through. Uh, you had a birthday. Last week that we talked about, sort of, John, you know, again, made it all about you because it's always all about Dave. So I, I guess you uh, you got some gifts. Stuff I did. Stuff you wanted to show off. I did. So first, before – um, how it weren't – okay. So I got two, two, two amazing things, really a total of four, but two like kind of groups of things. Mm-hmm. So – my parents who who went, you know, my dad went to the uh, – at the auction house and got all those Star Wars cards. Where, right? Yeah, the, the, the trading cards. Right, the, the Empire you... Strikes Back cards. Yep. And I'm still in the process of trying to put all those in a fucking binder. There's so many of them. It's yeah. fucking ridiculous. So it's one of those things if I'm bored, I want to, you know, really just do something with my hands. I'll be putting cards into fucking – into little slots. Yeah. So apparently part two of that, and I didn't bring this stuff with me because I just didn't feel like hauling around a bunch of stuff. But sure. we've talked about the Micro Machines, uh, the Micro Machines Starfleet. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, Right, the um, Micro Machines Star Wars action fleet. So these were the, the models 
you know, they're you know about the size of two fists put together. Mm-hmm. You know, these if you're not familiar with it, these these came out in '97 when the re-release in the movies. And yeah. when I was down in Mississippi, I bought as many of them as I could. Yeah, you know, and I had you mentioned that before. Yeah, yeah, my desk decorator, and I have I have you know a couple of them are still out. You know, my original ones are still out at, on my little collection at home. Mm-hmm. So my parents uh, found. As part of this, that same Star Wars auction, there was three new in box, uh, uh, vehicles. Really? Yeah, new in box. The ones from ninety seven, right? The ones from ninety seven. Micro Machine Star Wars Action Fleet. So the th- three there was is the Tie Interceptor, mm-hmm. which is actually one of the cooler ones. Yeah. Um, and That's I already with kind of like the the curved wings and the points. Yeah, it's the points. Yeah. You know, it looks like this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the tie interceptor, mm-hmm. and what's interesting too, is like the tie advanced, uh, like version, like the tie advanced is like a lighter blue and then the tie fighter, the tie bomber and the tie interceptor are all like a darker blue. Right. Just fun fact. Yeah. So there's a tie interceptor is a Jawa sand crawler, which I didn't have. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's not really the scale. You know, that's yeah, and so I probably yeah. wouldn't display it, but it's great. It's new in a box and it comes with a couple of little Jawas and stuff. It's fucking cool. Sure. But one that I never had or never even saw in the store was able to get was Slave One. Oh. So I have Slave One new in box to these micro machines. And it's it's spectacular. Aside yeah. from a little dust on the box, these things are fucking pristine. Yeah, I'm not fond of the name either, but <laughs> <laughs> good, good one. I like that. <laughs> So I uh, have to say thanks to dad. I have to say thanks to you know my mom as well for you know finding this stuff and going and picking it up. So that was that was cool for, so, for my birthday. So basically, what they did is that when they bought those trading cards, they bought this stuff at the same time. Yeah, I think it was part of the same lot. And like then, when they went to the, an auction and yeah. they, they bid on this stuff, it was all part of the same. So lot. they just kind of spread it out. So for yeah. all you know, they could have gotten even more, and they're just holding that shit for Christmas. That's entirely plausible. Yeah. And I will applaud that. Yeah. No, no, that's great. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. It does not. And let me let me just because I'm about to we're gonna we're gonna go on Instagram live here. Oh, okay. And um, because the next part, I think we'll we'll, we'll do we'll do live. Yeah. Like, if Dave didn't break whoa. his phone, that was <laughs> impressive. Um, Most impressive. So we're going on Instagram. We're gonna go live. So for for the record, so I'm getting a little heat heat from the wife. Oh boy! And it, basically for for putting out saying that there's an edict out there that says that we I can't have any more Star Wars stuff in the house. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Because yeah, you've told me that directly that so, I'm not allowed to give you. And stuff. it's and it's been on the podcast, and now everybody knows that my wife listens to the podcast, <laughs> and therefore now I got in trouble about it. So. <laughs> The reality is that I I have a lot of Star Wars stuff, and yeah. there's there's a lot of Star Wars stuff that's still out mm-hmm. and with limited space. Right. So if I put everything out, like I don't have the Star Killer Studios, right? Like like we have here. Yes. So this is thankfully some of my collection is is eking its way into Jason's collection, mainly right. because Jason has space to display it. Right. Um. Here in the studio, and honestly, I think if we combined our collections. We we would we would oh, cube out here pretty. Oh yeah, quickly. yeah. We we fill up this place. We'd have to get rid of yeah. all the video games and all this shit, and yeah, it would just be nothing. Yeah, all Star Wars. it have to be everything in here would have to be Star Wars. Yeah. So, so my wife is absolutely like <laughs> she's right. I really don't need to have more Star Wars stuff in the house. <laughs> right. So, th- so what you were saying was true. What I was saying was true, and it's not. It's this is not to besmirch my wife. <laughs> This is not to put. It's just not nothing negative. This is just a point of fact, right? Like you, there, you only have but so much room. And if I was allowed to have every Star Wars thing out, then we would there be there be you'd not, be the Star Wars it, it, house. Yeah, it would be a Star Wars house. Yeah. So, you know, I, I this is Kathy. I, I'm just this is me, my mea culpa, because I, I don't want everyone who's listening thinking that my wife's a tyrant. <laughs> She's absolutely correct. <laughs> I can't have everything out because I don't have my own studio yeah. uh, behind my house like some people do. Yeah, that's so. all right. I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat where it's like, 
whenever I tell Kristen, oh, yeah, I talked about you on the podcast this week. She's like, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> so I see. I don't I just I just wait for her to figure out if she listens and finds it out. Then yeah, then I've, I, I've stopped telling Kristen that I talk about her on the show because she stopped listening. So for as long as she's not listening, I can say whatever the fuck I want and she'll never know. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, and happy birthday, by the way, Kristen. <laughs> Uh, how the fuck I forget how to do go live. How many times have we done this? I know, seriously. I'm I am in a complete loss. All right, well, at the fifty minute mark, we'll just do some uh, some edits dun, 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 so dun, that we don't dun, sound dun, like complete fucking dun, amateurs. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Um. So anyway, that that particular we don't you don't need to edit all of it out. I'll, I'll talk through it till we get to there. Yeah. I, we got to clear some room anyway. So here, put, put, do some, do something with that. Just get, get the, <laughs> do something. <laughs> okay. All right. While you're doing that, so I listened to a, a political podcaster. No, no, put it away. Oh, like, okay. Put it, get it, get it and, out of the way. And he, uh, you know, all he talks about is politics. Very serious. He's a good, smart guy. Really intelligent guy. And um, I've been listening to him for a few months now, and oh, just over the last week, he has made two Star Wars-like references where he's never like talked about Star Wars ever, and then he all of a sudden just made two Star Wars references out of the blue. Really? Yeah. One was where he uh, he was talking about somebody talking about the the president, and he's basically and basically they they said that the president was just Emperor Palpatine, you know, and <laughs> so a lot of credit. yeah, and. Um, and then another one was Spaceballs, where, wow. where um, fuck, something happened recently, and uh, uh, our, our, our president went to Twitter immediately because um, that's, that's what he does. And uh, he said, do something. He's like, blah, 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 something about what just happened. Do something. And then this podcaster I was listening to, he like, immediately just thought of Spaceballs. He's like, and then he played the clip from Spaceballs. Do on something. the. Do something! <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know why, but... Uh, All right, so we're live. We're uh, live on Instagram. Are we doing it live? We're doing it live! All right, so we are, in fact, recording uh, on the podcast still, but we're, we're doing an in-podcast in live broadcast yes. on Instagram. Yes. So we're, we're breaking new ground here. Yeah, so and about the- 40 <laughs> minutes into the audio version of the podcast, you will hear this Instagram live portion, if All that... Right. Makes so, any sense. So if you're, it's it's focused on this area right here. <laughs> can, I don't know if you can, can go ahead, try it again. Uh, yeah, creepily looks over. <laughs> All right, people are joining, which is good. All Hello, right, everyone. I'm not gonna be able to watch though because the camera, the way the camera's faced. That's fine. We'll there. watch it in post. We'll watch it in post. All right. So this was something you got for your birthday, right? So this is a birthday present I got. Now I, we were just talking about the edict that was put out. Yes. The, the, no, no more, more Star Wars. Yeah. Now, by your wife. This is how I know my wife loves me, because even though there was an edict put out, this is what she got me. Holy shit. So, oh, that's let's, awesome. let's, let's frame it up. All right, so, so all right. full disclosure. Full disclosure. Go ahead. My birthday was last week, okay? Mm-hmm. I have already gotten this and opened it, mm-hmm. flew it, broke it. <laughs> <laughs> and it went back to Target and got an exchange. So what we're getting right now is this is the this is the pristine box from Target. Yeah. Okay, so hence I thought it'd be cool to reopen it while uh, <laughs> on a on a podcast for those of you. Because so this version has not been opened. This has not been opened. All yet. right. So it's a whole fucking process. Yeah. All right, let, let me make sure everyone and, can see. It. And for the audio podcast. Uh, what Dave is showing us is a Thai bomber, right? No, this is a Thai Advance. Oh, a Thai Advance, my mistake. Uh, it, and it's a drone. It yes. is a remote controlled drone. It's a flyable drone when I'm not trying to fly and control it. Yes. Otherwise, it is a crashable drone. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna start just for the sake of time. We're gonna start opening this. Yeah, thing. let's bust now, this bitch open. It's in a like a sweet black box. All too. right, so sweet. You haven't even got you. You don't even know. <clears throat> you don't even I, know. All right, so. So we got a little, little plastic guy at the top. And so right away, we know. So it's got like this special collector. These are special collector's edition ones. All right. Ooh, you got number one. 
well, unique number one. Oh, oh, oh. This is saying that there okay. is a card right. with a number somewhere yes. in here. So just letting you know, hey, this is this thing is an extra special. How you doing? Yeah. All right. Let's we're anyway. All right. All right. So we're moving ahead. What's in the box? So we're gonna we're gonna pull that out. So now we're oh, now we're the inner box is even cooler. This so this thing is wax sealed. Holy like, shit. Like circa sixteen hundred. From like the with the Pope, fucking ladders. Wax oh. fucking sealed. Is that what this is right here with the Im imperial symbol right yeah. there? Fuck, look at this. The so fucking empire wax seal right yeah, there. I don't know if you can see it. Do you even want to break that? Oh, man. Well, we, well, we have to. We oh. have to. So just so everyone can see, we got Hold the on, Tide. I'm going to get a picture got of this. the Tide Vance on one side. And Jason has seen snippets of this, me opening this already. Um, just for, Why would you fucking ruin it like that? Well, you know, you could have just... You could have just... This is full disclosure. Full disclosure. <laughs> we don't need to be 100% honest What's to these it? people, all right? Fuck them. That's what I say. It's so fucking cool. All right. So, we're, we're, we're we got the wax seals on the side. So, I'm just going to gently, gently pull. I hope it fucking works like the other one did. Because when I opened it the first time, holy shit. We should we should have been filming it so we could have put it right up on it. Hang on. I can do this. We have the technology. No, no, no. I mean, we're it's live on Instagram right now. Just fucking calm down, all right? Yeah. Just go with it. This this wax seal over here is not uh not cooperating. Yeah. Pull out my trusty Swiss Army knife. Get. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my god. All right, this was exciting, but it got real boring real quick. Shut up, you. All right. So the wax seals are broken. Are we ready? Yeah, let's do it. Holy shit. <laughs> I love Javier Moreno says, son of a bitch, you said you got this at Target? Yes, yes I did. Well, your Actually, wife. my wife did, and then I went back in exchange and I got another one. Dude, that is fucking awesome. This just... The presentation itself, uh, knowing how I crashed it the last time, <laughs> I almost don't want to take it out of the box this time. Wow. Now here. Oh, uh, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go through the whole fucking song. <laughs> All right, I took a minute video of this, right. so we'll put it up so, on maybe on our face or YouTube page. So I put the lid back on it. Yeah, and right. it's stuck. This, this is what happened at home, right? So all we're gonna see on the YouTube video is my fat ass yeah. or my fat belly. All right, so I took the, the lid off. I heard it start playing, and I kind of looked at my wife and I was like, "Holy shit!" All right, so then I did this. Oh, this is incredible. This I is... don't know how it knows that I took the lid off. I'll be honest with you, because there's, there's got to not... be some sort of magnet or something in there well, that, it's that just, knows. It, there's like wax. Again at last. Nice. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. I hope I hope yeah, the Instagram yeah, audience yeah. can hear it. Yeah. Alright, so that is fucking incredible. Now how about one more time? Sure. I feel like if we did it enough times, it would play the whole fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> At least the Vader parts. <laughs> this is a rebel that surrendered to us. Although he denies it, I believe there may be more of them, and I request permission to conduct a further search of the area. He was armed only, only with, with this. this. So I think we did a trivia pursuit question where this was, they asked who that guy, that commander was. Oh. Uh, conduct your search and bring his companions to me. Uh, this just, is and the design of this the the imperial like design of this I know this casing and the ca like the, the way it's lit uh, I really it, it makes me wonder like what they did with because I don't think they have X wing versions of this oh, I don't do think they? you could fucking do the X wing no, as good as you did this no, there's no fucking way that is you can destroy the he has foreseen this. It is your destiny. Join me to 
together we can move the galaxy of father and son okay that's it's, that's amazing it's 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 i told you yeah it's fucking spectacular and it keeps going yeah okay now be- I don't want to hear those fucking rebels talking. So. Yeah. All right. So let's get back to the podcast now, shall we? So because you were involved with the exchange, do you know the price tag of this thing? Is this something you I, want to talk about? I do. It's expensive. Okay. I think a target right now is like $169. Okay. Um, it's worth it. Really worth it, though. It's worth it just for this. Yeah. It's worth it just for this. Yes. God damn, you're right. It will play the whole it'll fucking movie. It'll play the whole movie. fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll literally run itself. Like, I, it's. Oh, oh, did we. I think we might have repeated. Right. We might have repeated. All right. It's... Regardless. So. <laughs> this is pretty incredible. The, the presentation of the box. It's very flyable. I think one of the reasons – I'll be perfectly honest with you. I, I consider myself fairly capable at – what was that? That was me. Sorry. Okay. Well, um, we'll I just... consider myself fairly capable of flying shit. But <laughs> as my son, who I know is watching right now on Instagram, would attest to, anything that we've gotten in the house like that was flyable – Mm-hmm. has not lasted long <laughs> no of course Je- jeff jeff will tell you and i'm curious of his response if he if he's if he's still watching um he, we got an air hogs thing for christmas and i'm like oh let me test it out you know he didn't even get a chance to get his hands on the goddamn controller all he did was unwrap it uh-huh. and i got it in the backyard got it up into the slipstream and it flew into oblivion <laughs> it's never to be seen again it was it was it lit seconds seconds <laughs> airborne and it was gone forever yeah. so um you know jeff when you come down next time i see it we'll you know you'll get i guarantee you this will still be flyable when you come down you'll get a chance to fly. will you guarantee that i will guarantee it only because you're not going to fly it or because i still have a i have a, a receipt i can go get another one <laughs> <laughs> if i break it again <laughs> no i it has a training mode which like kind of Makes a uh, uh, like a floor and a ceiling, so it can only go so high. You can can only control it, but so far, mm-hmm. so essentially to, to keep it from crashing. Yeah. And I took it out of the training mode to like, and I took it outside and got it into a tree, and it, it just it was a disaster from there. Okay. Hits tree, falls down, hits car parked, and and then goes from car hits hits asphalt, and then it. It looked fine, mm-hmm. but I think in the process of me trying to fix it, I probably made it worse. Uh, so it's all on me. I wouldn't, I, it, as an testament to this product, I, it is entirely my fault. <laughs> but the but, presentation of this thing, it's hand painted. Yeah, like it's it, like and even, again, there's there's only a finite amount of these that were made. Right, like they, it's got a certificate of authenticity and all that. Right. So, so I want to I want to show just for. I mean, it's you know, I got my little dick beaters all over the glass. You can you can actually recharge this thing. So that's a new sound we hadn't heard. I of. would hope you could recharge it. We meet again at last. The circle is now complete. Yeah, it's kind of loud. Now I am the master. So you can you can recharge the box. This this whole setup right here. You can recharge this this thing, so it'll continue so to like it'll keep light making up like noise this. and all that. Yeah. Oh, it's fucking fantastic. Yeah. So and there's boxes inside of boxes, but what I want to get out without going, hopefully taking too much more time. I think it's in one of these. You're making like zero progress. You're, I am. Yeah. We would try to get these boxes this, out. This thing. It, it is. It's here. It is. Uh, go ahead and unwrap that. Okay. I'm gonna Dave handed me what appears to be a manual. Probably the certificate of authenticity is in here as well, I would guess. Uh, that I couldn't tell you. All right, this, yeah, instruction manual. Ooh, very fancy, by the way. This it whole is, packaging. Yeah, the whole fucking thing is it's very fancy high shit. quality. Now look at look at the look at the typeface on that, and tell me that's not the same fucking typeface that's on the Tie Fighter game. 
Oh, came out yeah, in the they, mid yeah, 90s. It's, it's that old it's like the same fucking it's typeface. That, it's that late 80s, early 90s computer font. I almost, I almost splooged. Nice. I almost did. I was just just looking at the font. We could if we want to show the video. Yeah, and, and oh, and. Yeah, this same font they use for like instruction manuals for like Nintendo games, like yes. original NES games. Yeah, it, it it's like it, it's just the coolest ever. You know, mm, my wife, lots my of wife attention is, to detail. Is, my wife is the best. You know, she, yeah, she is. She she chose well uh, with this with this particular gift, but not surprised, with the husband. Surprised what? the shit out of me. What? Nothing. <laughs> surprised the shit out of me with it, and uh, I just. I can't speak to enough how, how much fun it is. It, it's very, like I said, it's very flyable. Once you get it figured out, if you've ever flown one of these little drone things before, you won't have any issues with it at all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in a box, but yeah, it, it's just a, just a great gift. If you're thinking of your, something for a star Wars fan in your life. Yeah. Uh, and you got a 180, 160, whatever bucks to spend. That's yeah, I noticed close. the glass part didn't go in all the way, but fuck well, it. We'll, no, it's because the thing is... We'll fix that in post. Yeah. So, so anyway, Instagram people. Thank you. We're going to finish up, but I hope... Uh, and subscribe to the All Things Star Wars podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you find your audio podcasts. Yeah. And get on YouTube and subscribe. We, we need s- subscribers. We need subscribers to YouTube. And the only reason I say that is because we need 100 subscribers in order to make a custom URL. So that I can put on like a card or something like, oh, go to YouTube dot, you know, YouTube slash ATSW or yeah, whatever. All things Star Wars pod. <clears throat> like we have everything else, but we can't do that right now because we don't have 100 subscribers. So get to it. Yeah. Just search all things Star Wars on YouTube. All things Star Wars pod podcast, whatever. Fuck it. I don't care. All right. So while he's closing that up, I do want to remind people, check us out on YouTube because we mentioned this when we did the the last last Jedi trailer when it aired during when it aired during Monday Night Football. We did our reaction here on the podcast, but we also did a live reaction on our YouTube channel. I was just a little bit uh, preoccupied and could not get the video out in time, but the video is now out on our YouTube channel. Me and Dave reacting live to that last last Jedi trailer. Our, our honest reaction, seeing it for the very first time. I thought the video turned out really well. We had a I did too. Yeah, I, 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 I really, I liked the presentation. Yep. Uh, I liked, I liked how you had the trailer, how it, you had it displayed. Yeah. So that we could see our reaction and everything. It's very, 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 very cool. Yeah. So go to our YouTube channel. Link will be in the show description and watch those videos. Like and like Dave said, subscribe. Please subscribe because we need a hundred subscribers so we can have a custom URL and then on our business cards, websites, all that stuff. We can be on YouTube slash. All things Star Wars pod. Got yeah, my iPad, please. I'm working on it. So we can, so I can get us back on, back yeah. on the rails here. All right. Before we get into our main topic today, we have one other thing I want to talk about. Oh, yeah. So uh, we had Halloween week we, and a half ish ago. We did. We, but our last episode posted after that because we recorded just like a couple days before Halloween and then posted it like like the day of or the day after Halloween. Anyway. So I just want to talk about Halloween a little bit because first of all we it, we started off with a party uh, at your place kind of at, right. at your place of business <laughs> and uh, at, at my Masonic lodge yep. yeah we had a party and you Kristen and I dressed up in our Halloween costumes I was of course as I mentioned here on the show Kylo Ren in the full Kylo Ren gear I've already got the lightsaber got the mask the hood the the robe everything um, it was good yeah it was good it was a good costume yeah I really liked yeah. it and um, Kristen so. I told her like weeks ahead of time, we're going to this Halloween party and you're going to dress up. She like hummed and hawed and, you know, fought it. And then finally the day came and I'm like, all right, we need to get you a costume. She's like, oh, all right, let's go to the Halloween store. So we went to the Halloween store right around the corner here and we're looking at stuff, looking at stuff, couldn't find anything she liked. She wanted to get one of those blow up BB-8 outfits. I don't know if you've seen those. You know, the blow up outfits. Yeah, that yeah, do yeah. For a lot of things. They have one for BB-8 where you put it on and like you get this little fucking blower. And it's like a massive BB-8 thing. And I'm like, that would that would have been that would have been cool. That would have been cool, but it would have been very cumbersome and she couldn't have done much with it. So I'm like, eh, you want to be a stormtrooper? And then we kind of went back and forth. They had these stormtrooper T-shirts. Right. Right. And a in a black and white Empire fucking skirt. Like, what do they call them? A tutu or whatever. And um, it's, sure. it's like a black and white skirt that's got the Empire symbol right there on the hip. And I'm like, 
why don't you get that black and white skirt, get that Empire shirt, we'll get you a fucking Stormtrooper helmet, and you can be a Stormtrooper. She's like, all right, I like that, and that's what she was. Yep. So she, we kind of made her like a like a girly Stormtrooper, and I think it worked. It did. It came out great. You guys look great. Yeah. So I want to wrap this around, because Halloween night, we got dressed up again. We went out with the kids. Our two youngest kids still like trick-or-treating. They're like 9 and 10, as opposed to our oldest, who is now, oh, he's too old for trick-or-treating. Oh, Yeah, sure. because now he's in high school, so that's... That, that's <laughs> God forbid you run into any one of your classmates. Yeah, so that's below him at this point. <laughs> so, but the four of us went out. Kristen and I dressed up in our full garb, and halfway through the night, we came across this other family. This, uh, it was like this big Indian family. And when I say Indian family, I mean from the country of India, not Native Americans, you fucking racist. But <laughs> yeah, this big Indian family that was coming the opposite direction as us down the street as we were trick or treating. And they saw us and they're like, oh, Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren. And they're like, hey, can we get a picture with you and all that? I'm like, sure. <laughs> so the whole family gathers around me. They've got these little fucking like one year old toddlers. They're like looking at me, kind of looking a little scared, but like everybody was excited. They're all laughing. And, the, and so, like, like they wanted to take a bunch of pictures with me because I was in the full Kylo Ren garb. So I did some poses. I ignited the lightsaber, you know, <laughs> and, you know, so somewhere I'm going to be in this family's Halloween pictures for <laughs> decades to come. And I mean, that really got me thinking when we went to the concert a few weeks back with John, the, right. the John Williams concert, we took some pictures with the, the stormtroopers afterwards. Right. From the, the five first. Right. Yeah. And we've kind of floated the idea about cosplaying and all that. Oh, God, I want one of those so bad. Yeah, like twelve hundred bucks for a fucking full stormtrooper <sighs> outfit. But, I mean, after experiencing that thing on Halloween with the family wanting to take the picture and, and just them getting so much joy out of it, I'm like. I kind of want to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't have any definitive plans right now, but I'm thinking I'm going to start putting together a plan to maybe actually try to acquire some sort of a legitimate costume. I have to I have to take my height into consideration because I'm not the tallest person on the planet. Well, and in fairness, like with the 501st, the uh, I think it was the Karita Garrison because yeah. I don't think anybody's responded to correct this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there definitely was some shorter people there. Yeah. That, that tie pilot I posed with was friggin' 4'9". Right. I mean, it's, yeah. it, might, it may very well have been a child, for yeah. all I know. Well, that's true. But, like, if, if you follow us on Instagram, there's a couple of pictures of me and Dave side by side, with like, holding beers or doing whatever. You see the the, the height difference. Right. So you can see how short I am. I am a little short for a stormtrooper. So I got to figure <laughs> out what I want to do. But I think, like, especially post-retirement, because we're both – at the latter end of our careers. And right. Like, this would be such a fun thing to do Fuck after yeah. retirement. Like, dressing up in either, like, a full Stormtrooper gear or whatever I, I would decide to do. And you, too. And, you know fucking just go somewhere where people can pose with you and they have a good time and like oh fuck yeah stormtrooper and i I think the the 501st and places like that that when they're doing they're going to chop and seeing kids yeah yeah i'd love that would be fun that would be a lot of fun i i agree with you yeah and i mean i it i never really seriously thought about it until halloween night yeah. When that family saw me, and they're like, oh, Kylo Ren, hey, can we get a picture with you? And, and they were so and, excited, and, and they were like, legitimately excited, you know? I And I have I have a little bit of an anxiety issue, and I, I'm not super good around people, uh-huh. you, know, you know? Thanks, military. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that if I was in the getup and, like, behind the mask, right, cause there's it a might bit of- actually, like, I might actually be okay. Right, because there's a level of anonymity in that anonymity anonymity and anonymity 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 mitochondria yes so yeah no but it and and i'm kind of like you i'm I'm not the biggest social person in the world right so but i mean that would just i would love to do that yeah you get it gets there it brings a little bit of joy to somebody else's life and it kind of makes your heart happy yeah, you know, it's it's good for you. You'll it helps you live longer. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know how I'm going to come up with twelve hundred bucks or whatever it is I Fuck decide no. to uh, to to do. But you know, I may be sucking dick in the back alley for a couple of years. Well, maybe we figure yeah. out how to incorporate it into a podcast. Maybe we start yeah. a. Oh, we'll start, start a doing. Patreon. Buy our cosplay uniforms for us. <laughs> yeah, or, maybe. Or a, or a GoFundMe or something. Something. But uh, yeah, no, that I, I wanted to bring that up because we are a couple weeks removed from Halloween at this point. But that was such an impactful moment for me. 
That's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. So, yeah, I just I just wanted to bring that up. And, I mean, for a while, I mean, I've still got the Kylo Ren outfit, obviously, so I may just wear that for a while. Now, it's not it's not a legit Kylo Ren outfit like the helmet. It's only the front of the helmet. Right. There's but, no back, but there, I've got the hood to cover it up. I'll tell you, with the hood on and, you know, from a good distance for, like, taking a picture, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a detailed costume. I mean, yeah. it was, like, what, probably cost you 60 bucks? Yeah, you know, somewhere between there. I think it was only well. I think it was only forty for the the helmet and the costume. Right. I already had the lightsaber, which was probably another ten on top of that, and then it didn't come with gloves, so I had to wear like my own personal gloves. Right. So, so. it took it took a little bit. That that was more than ten because I know the baby killer was was more. Expensive well, Kristen bought me that for Christmas, so I was just right. so you spitball on there. Yeah. But it's, it wasn't. It was more than ten. Yeah. But so. yeah, no, totally. I I would. I would love to do that. I love to just, even if for nothing else, like Halloween notwithstanding, just to be able to fucking gear up as yeah. a stormtrooper. I just think it'd be fun. Oh yeah, you know, just you know, putting on the uniform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely something we will have to explore. Uh, you know, uh, as as we go along. But for now, we're gonna take a quick break, and uh-huh. we will be right back with our main topic after this word from our sponsor. One, fifteen. 44. All right, is it going to be Colt 45 again? Our Maybe. Un- unless, unless you can think, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to see if they had the old commercials for the C-3PO cereal. Did you ever eat that back in the day? The cereal? I did. The old C-3PO the, cereal? Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like, like these little number eights almost. Yeah, it was like eating Captain Crunch where it like rips apart your face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I love that shit. I need to see if they have a commercial for that. <laughs> while, that while that's going on, I... I'm going to not entertain the YouTube audience at all, and I'm going to look at my phone. Call 45 malt liquor. It's a dynamite taste. It's it, actually, I've, I've never actually had it. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Hope everyone likes the unboxing of the drone. I mean, you out there. It's just, this is a part that's not going to be edited um i will say this that for for the youtube audience on this day in star wars history in 2014 the seventh installment in the star wars series or star wars saga is announced to be star wars the force awakens i'm reading it off the the star wars app if you don't have the star wars app get it there's cool stuff in here uh, at like the countdown to a Star Wars solo story or Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars solo, whatever. There's 773 days to episode nine. Some fun facts that we're going to be talking about here. Uh, Last Jedi, 38 days, 37 for us. Pretty much. Pretty close. Um, th- oh, talks about this, this Star Wars show. Good. Now you entertain these people. I'm gonna find. I'm, I'm, now I'm gonna piss. I think I'm gonna have to get a tetanus shot. So, what did you walk so uh, there's this little alleyway. No, you go, I'm talking to the people. So there's this little alleyway I'm between. The because there's this little alleyway between my house and this studio. A little little walkway, and the inside of the walkway that's next to the house, it's not finished. So they've got that fucking that that weird metal grating, but there's no like plaster over it or whatever the fuck they make walls out of. So there's a lot of like nails and shit sticking out. And I stick my hand out to kind of brace myself as I'm walking through there. And apparently there's a fucking rusty ass nail sticking straight out. And I put my palm of my hand right fucking on it. So, yeah, I mean, does tetanus kill you? Like if you get tetanus, whatever fucking tetanus is, and you don't get a tetanus shot, will you die what happens is it just like some organ failure can your body just eventually work through it naturally if you know let us know <laughs> public service announcement for getting your tetanus shot <laughs> yes so we well, re- did you know that you get your tetanus shot every 10 years but if you actually have exposure to it you're supposed to have i think it's a it's good for 10 years but if you've you do something that requires, like, say you run and step on a rusty nail. Yeah. Right? Or get one going through your palm. Right. Is that what just happened? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. How far into your palm? Not very. Yeah. I, it, oh. I don't think it broke the skin, but still. We'll see. Um, <laughs> so, um, so this happened with, with Jeff. Are we recording again? Or is this just strictly for we're, you? We're still, we're still going. It's whatever. Okay. Um, 
No, <laughs> so we were at a it was a swim team uh, function up. Uh, I believe it was at Dorney Park. We're at the uh, the water slides, uh -huh. and my son Jeff gets out of you know, like gets out of one of the rides and falls, fucking smacks his head open. Right? Oh shit! Yeah. So guess who gets to go to the hospital and yeah. you know and friggin' Hershey, Pennsylvania, or wherever the hell we were. So we go over to the hospital, and uh, you know he was being a trooper about it, but it, it was like it needed. Like I was looking at it like, ooh, that's going to. If I needed stitches. I basically, I basically slammed my fist, my my open palm into his forehead, and like walked with him the rest of the way. Like, okay, we're going to go and going uh, to go someplace so we can get this stitched up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the lifeguards at this fucking place were completely worthless. Oh, I'm sure they were fucking like 16 yeah. year old kids. They had that no just... no idea for triage. I, yeah. you know, people were passing out. It was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> so we we get him get him into the hospital, and they asked, well, like, well, when did he get his tetanus shot last? And we're like we're 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 taking guesses and and about when it was. Apparently, again, I'm not a doctor. I have enough diseases to you, play one on TV. You've seen enough doctors. I've seen enough doctors, but so don't quote me on this. Like Google it if you really want to know. But yeah. basically, what they told us was that if you when you had your tennis shots, good for ten years. But if you get it after five years, I'm still holding it. I'm putting pressure on his head. If you or or whatever, whatever this looks like on the video audience. Yeah. Like, what? I, I just, I, Why is he still doing that? I'm feeling a little awkward. <laughs> so like, let's just let's, let's just, just move that. Touch, head touch your face. Um, if you something happens after five years from mm. when you had the shot, then you're supposed to get like a booster. Okay. Like basically get the shot again. Right. Because right. I guess it loses it probably loses potency in your system. Yeah. But it's supposed to be good for 10 years. So however tetanus works or whatever, I think that's what you were you're asking. I don't mm. know the answer to that, but yeah. I do know that if you if you're guessing and you think it's been more than 5 years since you had your tetanus shot, you're going to get another one right. in the hospital most likely. Okay. Well, they, so they you, pump you have you have to get your tetanus shot for the military. Yeah, oh yeah, no, they pump me Full of fucking bullshit over the years, so I'm sure I'm good. Yeah, but I, yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> How many anthrax shots did you get? Uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, let's get into our main topic this week. Fucking fuck you, bitch! I know exactly what that. <laughs> no. That is, you say it that way. <laughs> so this is why you're gonna live longer than me. By the by, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But yeah, we're we're like you said, we're closing the book on Captain Phasma, and when we say that, we mean the comic book series right. that's been going on over the last month and a half, two months. <sighs> We talked about the first two issues in individual episodes, wrapped in with other stuff, of course. And we haven't talked about them since three and four came out, issues three and four, because it was a four-book miniseries. And this is one of the big, alleged countdowns to The Last Jedi things that they're releasing. And let's, let's just wrap this up. So, ultimately, we talked about in the first two books, it starts off with Phasma trying to cover her tracks as far as lowering the shields because that was a big area of contention everybody had why right. the fuck would she just lower shields at gunpoint like that why wouldn't she die for the empire well after reading the phasma novel we kind of found out she's really just looking out for herself right so they kind of made sense i felt like especially after reading all four issues of this now it's like okay i don't think we needed any of this it was nope. more just now her covering her tracks finding out this other fucking imperial officer uh, Lieutenant Saul Rivas also looked at the computer records and saw that she was the one that lowered the shields. And then it's just her hunting this asshole down right after Starkiller base explodes. And that's really all it is. It's like her chasing this guy down. She finds this other Thai pilot, your, your favorite character in this whole yeah. series, TN, whatever it is, 3769 or whatever her I fucking. I wish it was 3769. Yeah, whatever her designation was. It was TN something something. Hang on, we're going to validate that right now. And, uh, yeah, they chase him to this planet. There's this whole shit with, like, these this indigenous species and this other species that fucking tried to uh, migrate it onto that planet. And a whole lot of fucking nothing. Nothing significant. And finally, these last two issues, she rallies this fucking, this local tribe of people up. She's like, you will go to war and you will fight these people who, who happen to have Saul Rivas captured. She leads him into this massive war, leads him to their slaughter, doesn't really give a fuck. She's just doing it as a means to distract these people so she can go find Saul Rivas. 
And right. and the pilot did TN thirty seven sixty nine. Thirty four sixty five. Thirty four sixty five. You're was close. close. You're yeah, real close. That was close. Uh didn't have the same thing in mind. But yeah. you know, She's like, well, shouldn't we be helping them? And Phasma's like, no, fuck them. I just wanted to get these people out of my way so I can find Saul Revis and kill him. Unbeknownst to the TIE pilot, but knownst to us, that Phasma was just looking to kill this motherfucker to cover her tracks for lowering the shields. Yeah, there and then, is. yeah, ultimately she finds Saul Revis, who's captive by one of these species on this planet. They kind of have this real quick back and forth, and he's like, well, she's like, confess. And he's like, confess to what? I didn't do anything. I know that you dropped the shields, but I won't tell anybody. Just let me live. And she's like, confess. He's like, no, 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 no. I won't tell anybody. Please just let me live. And then she fucking kills him. Yep. Uh, our pilot, TN 3769, overhears <laughs> it. And Phasma eventually executes her as well. Yep. And that's where this whole fucking thing ends. She flies back to the First Order. All of her tracks are covered. No witnesses. And nobody's ever the wiser. And... Although it, I will say that that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, I mean honestly, you know, it's it's a shame that she takes out because the Thai pilot was like outside the door, and because the potential for her to have heard. Yeah, I think she would have killed her anyway. Yeah, even I think if she so hadn't too. overheard it. I, she she. It's just like when she left. Um, uh, Parnassus, Parnassus, like it, it just fuck you. <sighs> you you're not strong enough to be with me anyway. Yeah. Um. I think there is an interesting, like, the back and forth between her and Hux uh, when she gets all the way back and yeah. like, oh, we knew you'd, you'd come back. And, you know, oh, do you want my full debrief or whatever? They, they I have feeling they know something was up, right. you know, just based on like, you know, but she came storming back through and but it does. There's no like it doesn't even like give you like a cliffhanger like you want, like yeah. you want it to happen so bad. Like, give us something like. But Huxley really knows, you know, like, yeah. no, nothing. Not or, or even like, OK, well, welcome back. I'll read your debrief. Now we're about to go assault this uh, this resistance base. Yeah. And then, do, 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 you know, nope. as nothing. Yeah. Nothing. A waste of our fucking time and, and money and about sixteen dollars. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things I was going to say about this. If you haven't bought this series yet, I would highly recommend you don't don't wait for it to come out on Marvel Unlimited next summer. Or whenever it's going to If you hit. even want to, just to see how hot TN 3465 is. Yeah, yeah. TN but, 3465, she was she was drawn she, very, very well. Yeah, very she's cute. very cute. Yeah. Um, they could have went. They This could have been, for a four-book series, they could have done so much with this. Yeah. And it, it this story was so thin. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Why did they bother? I mean, I, honestly, like, did it, did it get to a point where it was like, okay, we've gone too far. We have to let this go. We have to let this out. Possibly. Because but, it I, to me, you have a novel. That novel probably sold very well because it's a character mm -hmm. that people want to understand and get behind. It really didn't get anything from Force Awakens. Right. So I really want to get to know this character. And the and novel you, was good. You wrote a novel about it, which you know gave us a lot of clues about why she is the way she is. Mm -hmm. And then in this four-part series, it's not even like, oh, it's for people that didn't read the novel. That's what I was thinking. It's, yeah. It doesn't matter if you read the novel or not. Like, you don't. I would have I would have put up with it as like, hey, we're going to give you some character development for this person, assuming that you didn't read the novel. Right. Well, that's we don't exactly even get was, that. Well, you get very small snippets, like at but the not, very not to the not to the extent where oh, you're actually no. going to know. Yeah, no, that no, no. she's willing to step on everyone's throat to fucking for her own survival. Right. I mean, you were, I, we can assume that because we know so much of the backstory. Yeah. But again, taking that position of if you're coming into it, oh, I'm not going to read the novel. Let me read the four-part comic series. No, you're just getting that. Okay, yeah, she tracked this guy down and fucking killed him. Well, yeah, and she had this little monologue right before she executed, you know, TN 3679. And uh, <laughs> it changes every time. It's great. <laughs> and she said, haven't you learned by now I'm a survivor? I do whatever it takes to survive. And they try to shoehorn that in, which that's basically what we learned after reading the Phasma yeah. novel. Yeah. yeah. If it was a meme, I would say directed by George Lucas and yeah. right after that. I mean, yeah. That was the whole fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was... But yeah, it was four issues of a whole lot of nothing going on. <laughs> Here we go. Just go ahead. Go what? ahead. No, keep talking. No, I'm not going to keep talking. 
<laughs> it's so loud when you listen to it on the podcast. Are you thirsty? <laughs> what would Lando say at a time like this? It's a dynamite taste. <laughs> I already did that for the YouTube audience. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, so Dave's got to pour his obligatory Diet Coke. Obligatory? Oblig- yeah. There's obligatory. nothing obligatory about this. This is a necessity. Yeah. But, yeah, like, so... Comp- <laughs> Always the distractor. So compare this to the Shattered Empire series, that four-book comic book series that we got right before Force Awakens stark difference between the two. Yeah. But I think it was like a lot of the same artists, uh, same writers, and I think they were trying to do the same thing, but this one failed miserably compared to what that did. Well, Shattered Empire, there, was, there wasn't there was a singularity in character either, where you, you just had, you know, this was just solely based on fashion, where Shattered Empire was about um, Poe's parents and their interaction with Luke Skywalker. True. And it was like, you, so you went across... Yeah, you you just yes, it was focused on the. the it was a focused on Poe's mother. Mother, uh, what the fuck's her name? I can't remember. But uh, uh, Hottie McCotterson. <laughs> yeah. And then so you focus on Hottie McCotterson, and then her interaction with Luke happens at the end. Right, but she interacts with to, Leia in one issue. She yeah. interacts with Han in one issue. And think of, they could have done the same thing with this Phasma comic. Like they could have had like. Her like help Kylo Ren get off a of fucking Star Killer base, and then throughout the course of that, then she like has to get with like Hux, and they have to figure out who this. Instead, walks right by the battle. Like yeah. they show the fight going on, and she basically is blitzing by. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, do I help this clown? Nope. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. And fuck, yeah, they could have done so much with it. Yeah, but it really the- was. It was a waste. Yeah. It, it, I, I'm, I'm very. This is the first. Aside from the Guardians of Wills book, which I probably shouldn't have read anyway because it was meant for a younger audience. Yeah. This is probably the most disappointing thing that I've read. Of the new canon. Of the new canon. Yeah. You know, just the expectation was high. Right. Especially because, again, this is the countdown to The Last Jedi. It's like, oh, this is going to be fucking big. And it... It didn't give us anything new. It told us shit that we already knew. We already knew fa- because of the Phasma novel. We knew this bitch was out for herself and she was going to fucking kick the shit out of anybody that got in her way. Yep. First order or not. So yep. we already knew all this before going to this comic. So and and I don't think it did enough, like you were saying, to appease the people who didn't read the novel and just wanted to read the comic. So, no, I mean, you, you could have. You could have done a lot of fan service there by having some interaction with other somebody other than this this first order pilot. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we we just we just had too much information. We knew too much about the character, so this these things just it just didn't do enough fan service to develop the character. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that, again that's our opinion, and this is based on us reading the novel. Prior to yeah, you know, reading these comics on purpose, sure, and well, and that's from the way a they timeline were perspective. Too. This is this is what we wanted to do, right? Um, but yeah, it's it, I I wouldn't I wouldn't waste if we're if we're grading this, you know, I definitely give this a, 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 a D minus. Yeah, I was gonna say D or a C minus no, because this is a D minus. The only reason it's not an F is because of, of uh, TN thirty four sixty five. Yeah, because yeah, the, the art was great. Oh, really, really, yeah, really, drawn, really, really good well. artwork in this comic, yeah. but story very just kind of dry, and they wasted four comics to tell a story they could have told in one comic. That you very easily could have been done in one comic. Yeah, yeah. So. Where Shattered Empire, like you, when you got the like the graphic novel for that, mm-hmm. it was oh man, this is worth it. You know, it's it thick, had a lot going on in it, was well drawn and everything else. Yeah. This, highly disappointing. Yep. Highly disappointing. So yeah, wait for it to come out on Marvel Unlimited if you do still want to read this. Or don't. Yeah. We've told you pretty much everything there is to know. Yeah. And we could, if you're really interested in seeing some pictures, Instagram us, we'll send you some screenshots of the comics so you can yeah. see, you know, the hotness of the yeah. characters. Yeah. TN3769. <laughs> so, all right. And and that's this episode. Uh, hopefully you guys stuck with us through the whole thing. It was kind of a mishmash of a bunch of different shit, kind of getting caught up again because we had a, a bigger gap between recording sessions this time. So uh, whenever we do that, we always got to kind of like pay. Talk about we go once once a week play catch up well you know we'll record like early one week and then later the right. next week kind of thing and, so it, and be... this is i am curious too because this is a recording day where we're recording after we've worked 
Yeah. Yeah. So it, and it does too. the energy level sometimes is different. So it I, is. I feel that, you know, I was excited. I was excited today about the uh, un- unboxing of the the, the drone. Well, that was the most impressive part of the whole episode, <laughs> I think. And hopefully, it comes off to the audio audience. I know it, it, it's much more appealing to the video. Which check us out on YouTube if you want to see that. But right. yeah, still, so hopefully, the audio audience was able to follow and yep, all that shit. And if not, well, fuck them. I don't give a shit. <laughs> No, I do. I really love you guys. Thank you, everybody. Social media? Social media. On Instagram, all things Star Wars pod. Again, we've said it a hundred times. If you've listened to us at all for 27 prior episodes, you know that the Instagram is is the method to get in touch with us. Um, Facebook is a close second, though. Facebook is a close second. However, we don't get like the likes... Like, there's not instant gratification like there is on Instagram. Yeah. Like, I get a pop-up every time somebody likes something on Instagram. So, on Facebook, we have our loyal su- we have our loyal subjects, <laughs> our David Schmucks and our Walter Whitcos. Whitcos. Yep. That are... Wally Frogmore. Yeah. Guys are posting stuff on our page. And, Big you know, there's, there's, lots of, there's lots of back and forth, and we love that. Mm-hmm. We did get a five-star review very recently. I saw that. Yes. From uh, from somebody who actually had texted me prior to this and said, "Hey, you know, you need to be checking your Facebook reviews for spies." Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, thanks, Jeff, for that. Um, but yeah, if any any kind of time you can give us a review, subscribe. You know, all those things help us get our numbers up. Yep. Um, like I said, we're working on some stuff. Uh, we're probably not going to talk about it right now. Maybe we will talk about it a little bit closer to the movie. But as far as you know, maybe putting some swag together yeah. for especially for our loyal listeners. Um, you know, we're not going so far as to have stores or anything else. We're not fucking crazy. We're not the Sofa King guys. Yeah, we're, we're not that big. <laughs> yet. 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 Yes. So, however, we can get that big if you follow us on Instagram. And share us. Sh- sh- share our material. Go on YouTube. Watch us on YouTube. I think we need to do... I think Jason and I, like, again, as in me, as an effort to pull a little bit more of my weight, <laughs> I think we're going to try and... Uh, we are got to play a little bit of catch up on YouTube and get the episodes yeah. up. So I think if I'm posting some stuff, he's going to teach me how to do some basic things so I can we can get caught up on that. Yeah, the J- good... Jason is the guy for all that, but yeah, you can still you, you can find our older episodes that are up on YouTube. Uh, that we, that since we started taping, which yeah. I forget what episode that was, um, uh, it was it was maybe fifteen, uh, yeah, fourteen, something fifteen, like something like that. Yeah. So you can catch up on those episodes, and hopefully by the time you get through those, then we're we'll have this other episodes up. Yep. And good news is, is I have a lot of uh, off time coming up. Yes. from work, thank God. So we'll use that to kind of play catch up and get get our shit together. Yep. And uh, like I said, I think Jason and I were kicking around the idea of having a uh, like <laughs> some Instagram live, uh, you know, studio modifications. You oh know, yeah, with yeah, maybe <laughs> potential trips to IKEA. <laughs> that you know, would be knows? hilarious. Or to Bed Bath and Beyond if we have time. If we have time, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we'll have enough time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Instagram, Facebook, all things Star Wars podcast, and pretty much anything. Uh, Google Play, iTunes, and if you're going to follow us on Twitter, you can follow us at All Things SW Pod. And everything we put on Instagram is simulcast on Facebook and on Twitter. So if you're, we're trying to hit all the all the different outlets as yeah. far as media goes. And if you really, 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 really want to e- send us an email, you can send it to All Things Star Wars Pod. At gmail.com. I haven't checked that in a while, so I'll have to do that soon. Neither have I. I think I get a notification if we get something in there. There's okay. probably a bunch of spam in there. Yeah, there is. <laughs> as always. But, all right. Next episode, we are finally going to talk about the Inferno Squad book, the novel. Yes, I read a book. He did. Recently. He so. completed the book. Yeah. And so that is that is great. Yes. And it's just in time for the, ta- for the taping. Yes, because, week. yeah, by the, when next week's episode airs, the Battlefront 2 will be a day away from releasing. So it'll be perfect time will, to talk about Inferno Squad. We will be full froth, froth for, for Battlefront 2. Did I say Battlefield? I feel like I said Battlefield. I'm going to pretend you didn't. And we're Battlefront. Just Battlefront. Battlefront. Fuck Battlefield. Yeah, then there's no other, there's no other first-person shooters that exist right now other yes. than Battlefront. So keep an eye out on that. And Dave, as always, may the force be with you. May the force be with you. A little bit of beer in there. There was. I saw it.